conversation series continues from Richmond, Paul Richardson, who I was able to sit down and talk with last year this time. And uh, I guess people liked it because when I was talking to fans on Twitter, say, hey, here's some of the stuff we've done. You were one of the people that got requested to sit down again. So appreciate a little bit of time. Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's just let's jump right into it. How are you feeling? At what point did you feel healthy again? And, and how do you feel like camp's going so far? Uh, I'm feeling great, man. I've been feeling uh, feeling this good for a while now. Uh, just feels good to be back in the swing of things, man. Just not being able to do a lot of stuff during OTAs, you know, kind of upset me. But, you know, they put a plan together and it's been working out. They had, got a fast start through camp. Now they're making sure, like, I'm good to go with, uh, with all this contact going on. Yeah. Last year was such a weird year because you, you basically got hurt immediately mm -hmm. and then we're, we're fighting through it. Take us through what that was like. Is And then I, you picked up another injury along the way, didn't you? So what, what was last year like? Uh, last year was a trying year, man. I came here, you know, um, after free agency, and uh, you know, I wanted to make a big impression, you know, on this team, on this offense, on this, on this fan base, and um, in this division. And you know, it just didn't work out like that. I ended up getting messing up my shoulder. Uh, when the season started, I messed it up worse, and I was just trying to push through, try to help the team as much as I could before, you know, I needed to get the surgery to prepare for next season. So. Uh, it was just difficult more like, you know, mentally. I just felt like, you know, I had a lot of responsibility. I felt like a lot of people was looking at me and looking to me and looking for me at one point when the seat, when I was done, they were looking for me. And then it was just like, man, I wasn't there and I couldn't fulfill my role. So, you know, I'm just happy to be back and now I can make up for that lost time. Yeah, what was the breaking point where you finally said, man, I can't, I can't do this anymore? Because you were fighting. And, yeah. and I know at some points fighting against some of the people around you telling you, hey, man, shut it down. Yeah, I mean, it's, you got to be smart with your body. You can't... Uh, you, you got to listen to your body. You don't, you don't want to be putting stuff in your body that's going to do, that's going to have, you know, long-term effects on you, you know, when you're done playing. It's like shots, things like yeah, that. Yeah, you can't, you can't touch, you can't, you can't do those things. And if I need those type of things for me to play, then it's, it's, I shouldn't probably be playing. So, you know, it was being smart, trying to be healthy with my, with my decision making and then healthy with, and not putting stuff in my body that I didn't need. This year, you guys have quite a few new faces to the receiver room. Uh, some guys obviously coming back, Doc, Trey. Mm -hmm. um, Trey had his own trying year last year. But what about these young guys do you like so far? And, and it's all, it's funny to me because you're, you're, what, 26, 27? 27. You're like the old guy in the room outside of Be Quick. Mm -hmm. what, what's it like being that mentor to, to guys like McLaurin, Harmon, all these young guys come in, even Trey in year two? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because, you know, guys come in out of college, they're 22 years old, they're 23 years old. And <laughs> and I was in my third year. and I, But... You know, it, it's good. It's good having these guys come in. You know, they like Terry, for example. He reminds me of myself a lot. I talk to him a lot about his running, about his route running, about you know when to tempo, when to go all out, and when to save yourself. As far as like to give the illusion of speed, and he listens to everything. You know, we develop a personal relationship. We talk about you know things off the field. He comes to me, and that's the kind of you know that's the kind of room I wanted to have. That's how I came last season. I came in. I took on, tried to take on a leadership role, take guys to go eat, get to know them personally. You know, we able to help each other with the plays and, you know, build chemistry. And that's what I'm trying to reestablish this year. I think I'm doing a good job right now of getting the guys together. And uh, I want to continue to, you know, build the chemistry in the group. I ask guys, how are you feeling? Hey, what's going on? You have anything going on? You know, you, got, you need somebody to talk to. And, you know, we have open relationships with each other for the most part. And I think, you know, that's going to help us grow from our room on out to the rest of the def uh, rest of the team offense. Obviously, the head of your room is like Hillier. There's so many personalities on this staff. You know, the defensive side is a bunch of crazy people. Tim, yeah. Tom Sula, Rob, mm -hmm. Jay is a, is a loud guy. Ike is the – Ike's kind of the quiet guy, at least externally. Yeah. What's it like to play for him? Um, Ike is a player's coach. You – you got to respect where, what he has to say. You got to respect where he's coming from. And you got to respect the room because, you know, he did it. And he did it at this level. And he was drafted top 10. And he played through injury. He's been every part of this business he's been a part of. So for him to be the head of our room, bro, it's like, uh, it's like, dang, we got another player in there. You know, he just got a little gray hair. So, uh, you know, it's all good. It's all love. Uh, obviously, chemistry is also important with the guys throwing you the ball. What's it? Get, let's go through all three guys. Uh, what What is Case Keenum? Man? Tell me about maybe the first time you met him and how that relationship's evolved. Uh, Case Keenum, uh, he's a pro. He comes in. Uh, he had to come in, learn a new playbook, learn a new system. 
as well as try to figure out how to lead, you know, offense, you know, it, that's tough to do. You know, Alex had to do that too. That's tough to do. And the fact that he's picked it up so well, he's able to, you know, try to pull guys along. I think that's great. Colt, he's a vet. He's been here. Um, he's a vet as well. He's been here for a while. He's had to lead this team at different times. He has the experience. He has that comfortability. And he developed his arm strength. So, you know, you respect him adding to his game after seven, eight years and then taking this, you know, serious. You know, you need that from a leader. Then you got Dwayne, who just came out of college, um, young, gunslinger, strong arm, you know, uh, bright eyed, bushy tailed kid. But, you know, you see where he's made his growth just from OTAs to now as far as his decision making, as far as his comfort level. And like me, I talk to him a lot. I, I don't know who's going to be the guy, you know, yeah. none of us do. But I have a decent relationship with all of them. I talk to them off the field. I talk to them between plays. I talk to them if, uh, if something is not right, seeing what they see and how it looks. So I, all that is important. Uh, with Dwayne, one of the things that I've noticed, and if I'm wrong, you can tell me, um, but it seems like there's a lot of balls he throws that maybe you get away with in college that, you know, if, if you're, you're the guy catching it in the NFL, you're going to get clocked. Yeah. Balls over the middle. And, and until he eliminates those, he's not going to be able to play. Um, but that's not saying he's not going to learn that. He's, he's already getting better demonstrably day after day. Mm -hmm. uh, those conversations that you have with him saying, hey, man, like, you can't do that to us in, in the NFL. Even if it's practice right now, those safeties aren't going to hit us. But the minute we're in live action, like, please, please don't get my head taken off. What are those conversations like? Try to give him a realistic expectation of what game day would be like. Even more realistic than that, I don't have those conversations with him because – it's guys that's been playing quarterback at this level for 10, 12 years, and they make those same throws, and and guys go up and make plays. Now, as far as his decision making, when he sees stuff, he he needs to trust himself and throw the ball. But as far as gambling, guys gamble every week. Guys gamble and win champion. Guys gamble and win championships. So I'm not gonna stop a kid from being himself. I just what I would tell him to just you know be more. When you are comfortable, when you, when you see something, react. If you yeah. see something there, throw it. Don't, you know, don't second guess yourself, especially in the middle of a play. But as far as gambling and making plays, man, sometimes if you don't gamble, you don't get the play. And a lot of stuff, you know, that guys gamble with that the receiver can't make the play, other receivers can make those plays, and it looks like less of a gamble. You got, I played for a quarterback who ran all over the field and lofted the ball in the air, and we made a lot of plays like that. Right. And you do that in college, you do that in pop winter, you do that in backyard football, and they're not criticizing him for it. So um, I want him to be comfortable. I want him to be himself and continue to make plays. Obviously, with Russell in Seattle, it was pretty clear who the quarterback was. Last year, it was pretty clear Alex was going to be the guy. You mentioned you don't know who it's going to be. Do you feel like there's going to be a point where you need to know where this team feels like, all right, we got our guy? Or how, how does that work from outside the quarterback room? I don't say there's a point where we need to know. I think it would be better if we did know. Everybody agreed with that. But um, you got to know your personnel. When a, when a quarterback – comes in after the first quarterback goes down for whatever reason, freak accident, he has to come in and he has to know what type of tight end he has in the game, what type of receivers he has in outside and, uh, and in the slot. So just like receivers, we have to come in, we got to know who's back there. Okay, well usually when I do this, I get the ball here, but when he does it, I get the, when, when the second guy does it, I get the ball in a different place. You have to know that. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what practice is for. That's why you have to develop that chemistry. So. I think it's uh, it's part of being a pro. You gotta know your quarterbacks gotta know their personnel and who's running what and how to get them the ball. And we gotta know who's back there, how they deliver the ball, and where it's gonna be in the time. And that's on us. All right, this has been far too serious of a conversation. You're a fun guy. Let's have some fun. What'd you do to get away from football this off season once you were able to? And, and the rehab's done. Go on vacation. What'd you do? I spent a lot of time with my family this off season, man. I think this was the most time I spent with my mom in the off season. Um, yeah, I kind of I kind of made that a focal point. I wanted to be more family oriented. I wanted to like uh I I don't I don't go out there a lot. I don't like to visit. I didn't like to visit Vegas a lot. And I spent, you know, since I was on IR in October, I would go visit my mom a lot, go see her. I told her at the beginning of the year I wanted to know everything that was going on that was challenging or bothering her cuz I wanted to make her life easier in everywhere I could to where all she had to do was just wake up every day and thank God and you know, she she told me, you know, the different things. She was like, you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about that. I'm like, no, that's not a worry. I just want to make sure my mom is okay. And so that's going to spread out throughout my family. Next year, I'll have a, when this season ends, I'll have another focal point on a relation, another relationship I want to develop in my family and, 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 and make sure just everybody's all right. You know, that's kind of what I do. How has that affected your life? It's made me more happy. Um, 
just to know that my mom is all right, just to know she's doing well. You know, I was primarily raised by in LA by my grandma and my aunt, so I want to make sure they're okay. I spent, you know, the second part of my off season making sure my aunt was all right, taken care of, and and I and I focus on that relationship, and I focus on that relationship more. Make sure my grandma's all right, and you know, just to continue to just you know make sure I'm taking care of the heads of my family, man. I know they wish they had more contact with me, you know, at times, and wish they saw me more, but you know, it's a lot that goes on, you know, in my life that you know that takes away from that time and I just want to work on getting those times back. Do you think you'll fly them out here more? Uh, obviously not to Richmond, but to DC for games, things like that. You, you know, what's it mean to have family come watch you play? Yeah, it, it was it was rough getting hurt last year because I didn't know which week was going to be my last week playing. So, you don't want to fly people out and then they can't see you play and that's what they come for. Ideally, they, they want to see you too, but they they come you fly 6 hours from the West Coast, you got to fly 6 hours back. You want to you want to see them do what they're out there doing, you know. So, you know, I want to get my family out here more, uh, you know, being healthier will help with that because then I can plan bringing them out and, uh, you know, they can see me do my job. They see me do it in Seattle. They see me do it here. Look forward to hopefully us all getting to see you play this year. Glad yep. you're healthy, man. Good yep. to see you. Thanks for having me.